So now that you've seen in the last chapter what a stable model is, uh, the question is now, what do you do with it? Well, the stereotypical way in ASP is, as you have seen a couple of times, you have a problem, you want a solution, you use ASP for that. Well, more seriously, what you do is you model your problem as a logic program and then you push the button and get stable models out of it. So you associate with the specification of your problem given as a logic program a bunch of stable models. Actually, bunch can be quite a lot in, in some application cases. But that's the idea, right? Each stable model uh, gives you an alternative solution to your problem. The example I was giving a couple of times was timetabling, right? So you have a timetabling problem, you specify your timetabling problem, and then every stable model corresponds to an alternative timetable. Good. This is, is one thing that you can do, but there's much more in ASP. And keep in mind that ASP grew up in the area of knowledge representation and reasoning, hence reasoning is important. Or as we say, when you think in terms of an implementation, reasoning modes. Now, if you think of what I was just saying, that you take a logic program and want to enumerate all a stable model, this is more or less uh, the operation that you do. But the most basic thing is actually just to check satisfiability. And satisfiability means, the, it's just a question, does my logic program have a stable model? And in satisfiability testing, this is where you look for classical model. That's more or less the prototypical reasoning scenario, and that's where it stops. In ASP, as you see, there's quite a list of different, different things that are also supported by systems. So satisfiability may seem easy because what you do is you say, well, here's my problem. Does it have a model? Is it satisfiable, right? Okay, but often enough in practice, in particular, what the guys in satisfiability testing do, they are doing often hardware verification. This was their big killer application uh, years back and still is more or less, but they actually use not satisfiability, they use unsatisfiability. So the idea is you model, let's say, your Boolean circuit, your chip, you model this guy, and then you add the description of a bug. Okay, now if your Boolean circuit, your model of your chip together with the bug has a model, that the whole thing is satisfiable, and um, well, then you have also actually a counterexample which shows, oh, in this, in this configuration, this bug becomes the formula that or the, or the logic program or the rules that represent the bug um, have become true and you can look at the assignment at the model that you get to analyze this. So it is bug free if it's unsatisfiable. So you actually work a little bit more and you're actually happy with unsatisfiability in this case if, um, if your model of the Boolean circuit and the bug or the bugs uh, has no model, is unsatisfiable, great, then there can be no configuration where these bugs take place and you're fine. So this is more or less what is this, what is about this basic reasoning mode, satisfiability or unsatisfiability. Enumeration, we, I already mentioned that actually in, in, in Klingo, for instance, is our, our system that we developed in Potsdam. You can give a parameter as an integer. If you say zero, you get all stable models that there are. And printing takes quite a time. Actually, the system may very quickly compute them, but printing sometimes is, is, is the bottleneck. So already a sneak preview on when you, when you use these guys. So when you do plain enumeration, you enumerate all atoms, but sometimes your solution is only given by a subset of the atoms, and that's actually when you can use something like projective enumeration, where the idea is, if these are the atoms that you use for modeling, but you're only interested in this fragment here, then finding one solution which is unique on, on these uh, variables is enough and you don't care about variability in, in the rest. That actually comes, comes in handy when you have lots of auxiliary variables and you're not really interested in their values, you're only interested in, 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 the, in the variables that you projected on. Technical detail, which is perhaps not so important currently, uh, is in, in ASP actually you have algorithms for doing that that run without solution recording because solution recording is more as the cheap trick to do enumeration, right? So you more or less map enumeration down to satisfiability by doing the following. So you compute a model, stable model, and you print it and then you add a constraint to the system or a rule, or a rule or integrity constraint that forbidding this model. Then you launch it again and you spit out the next model. And you can imagine that really your space grows because uh, there may be exponentially many models, right? 
But again, there are sophisticated algorithms that run without solution recording. But for small problems, solution recording actually is not so bad. So the, the next type of, uh, type of bullets here describes intersection and union. And again, this is a very cool thing to do if, for instance, if you have lots of models. So we had applications in bioinformatics where you want to model an, an, uh, a species or an organism, right? And you get hundreds of thousands of models. And the question is, what do, you, what, what do you draw from that? And then the idea was more or less to say, oh, look, let's look at the intersection. What is true in all these models? What is common to all the, the alternative models that one can find? And that was really interesting then. Or the other way around is you look at the union of all models, but not actually what is in the union, but what is in the complement. So what is outside of the union? Because these guys are more or less, for, they, they appear in no model. So that was also an interesting observation that gave you a type, sort of an approximation. And the cool thing is, all this intersection model also works with optimization. So a typical problem we did, we, we solved in bioinformatic application was, give me the intersection of all optimal models. Optimal, I don't know, they produce most of the sugar or, or consume less of nutrition. So anyway, right? So that's a bit the idea. And also, uh, union and intersection can be done uh, without uh, enumerating all models, right? So, but let's perhaps not go into, into details at that point. So anyway, this is more or less what ASP has to offer, given that it is actually um, an approach that comes from the area of knowledge representation and reasoning. It also has rich reasoning modes, and I just sketched you some more. And there are actually many, not many, but there are actually some more. Okay, good. So this was somehow a brief section on how you can use stable models to build more sophisticated reasoning modes like these guys. And uh, next we will finally come a little bit to our hidden agenda is, and this is to make you fit for modeling. So we will now look at the real modeling language on one slide. Okay, so stay tuned.